Welcome back. Tonight, I want to talk to you about DJZ 3D Collection, which is something I've put together. Okay, and we're going to take a look at what that is. I can break it down quickly for you. We've got a 0123 basic 3D generation model from Comfy Workflows by H360RU. Found it was quickest just to use that one, and I've included it with the link. This is all in the pack. Tripo SR basic and that's a basic workflow takes an image input sv3du basic same again basic workflow image input and then i've included an example of how you can do text to image to sv3d with uh text to image and image to image and obviously you know you could continue to control the input more i find sometimes it's nice to not have a background um but like I said, you you can experiment with that. So I've said you can copy the SV3DU basic into any text to image workflow you like, and then just take your final image and push that into this code that you'll paste in at the end. So, all right. If you're not sure how to do that, it's just it's just copy paste. Um, I'm sure I'll do a short on it at some point. I've also written an article explaining in more detail the pipeline because it doesn't just stop when you finish your generation. Uh, you'll be using Meshroom for photogrammetry. That's going to turn the video frames that we dump. So we generate a video, which is a sequence turnaround of an object. And then we take those images into Meshroom, which is going to generate us using photogrammetry a big OBJ. And then we take that OBJ into Blender and basically cut out your actual object that you wanted to generate. Maybe patch up some holes. There's lots of videos on stuff like that. And there's also videos on stuff like this. I plan to do it in the future, but I'm trying to introduce this quickly. So just to give you a cover over, over just to give you just to give you an overview, Stability has released three. 3D AI models. So we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, which basically made turnarounds. So it made different angles. You would give it an image, it would try to generate a 3D object, and then it could have the camera placed in position. Well, that was the idea. It performed pretty well. That produced turnarounds. You give it an image, and it gives you different angles and rotations of the thing. That was the idea. No prompt, I don't think. I don't think so. Uh, Trip OSR is the next sort of iteration. It's a shame there's no images here. But essentially, this produces an actual 3D mesh. All right. So this is another step in a different direction. So using a single image, 3D reconstruction. All right. So that's what this image was. That's what this one's all about. So while this does generate a bunch of a bunch of images, if you look in the in the output, you'll find there is a mesh there, uh, an OBJ. All right. And then this is the latest 3D generation model to be released. Came out about a week ago, maybe now. And where is it? 10 days ago. So this is a little bit more accurate, a little bit more fidelity. So um, it comes in two variants, SV3DU, which is what my workflows are dealing with, and SV3DP. It's a lot more memory requirements for this one but allows you to do orbital views on specified camera paths i don't know what format those camera paths come in so i didn't bother looking at that yet but this one just takes a single image input without conditioning like the old stuff all right going back to the 3d collection of course i've given you the workflows you need to follow along is an example of something coming out of the SV3D. Okay. I don't know why some of them aren't loading on my uh, screen here, but there you go. And these came from a single image input. So if we take a look at the pack, we'll have a look at 0, 1, 2, 3 first. So with 0, 1, 2, 3, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. There we go. We're loading the model comes along it's got full hardy remicry in two places three by three places there we go 
and this is for each of the angles. So here we've got elevation 15, azimuth 80. Here we've got elevation 90, azimuth 80. And here we've got elevation minus 20, azimuth minus 15. And if we generate these from our Lizard Warrior, generated in 2.1 a long time ago, we get some angles of the Lizard Warrior. Okay, so as you can see, it's just a slightly different angle, right? And obviously, that can be used to automate a more complex photogrammetry source. That's the idea there. And obviously, we could use all kinds of LoRa's and fine-tune checkpoints to get closer to a specific thing. Anyway, so now we'll take a look at the next one, Trip OSR. Oh, for some reason, my RenBG isn't working right now. It was working a minute ago, so that's fun. So I experimented with RenBG and with Layer Diffuse and with Segment. So you can get a slightly different mesh output because it's going to clip out some of the background, but you can do that later anyway. It's just depends how much work you're putting into the thing and how perfect it can get off the fl off the fly. So this is, anyway, this is a lot easier. So what we've got is we've got geometry resolution, threshold, and chunk size. I've left everything as is. Okay, it's going to do, it's got its own custom setup here. I haven't got a mask. I've just literally put the image in. So we've found our skeleton warrior. Let's see how he looks. And as I said, if you do look in the output, you will find a, um, an OBJ, but the thing is, it's got a funny naming convention. Anyway, so as you can see, it's given us a little thing here, and it's done its best, bless it. And this is really cool though, because it's just giving us a mesh straight, and you can play around with this. You know, you could uh, paint, select, and cut out a lot of these polys that you don't need, but and sometimes it does better. But it wasn't about it was about making the mesh. So this this is, like I say, this is pretty cool. But uh, it all led to the uh, this this one. As you can see, she's spinning around. And then we slow it down with interpolation. Right? So here it is. We give it all these settings. It looks complicated, but really all I've done is um the major thing here is just to make it scale with whatever you put into it two five seven six and then keep the aspect ratio to a multiple of 64 which is nice and safe and then you get nice results but um there's no prompt required on this one so i figure that you've already got the image and as i said before you can just cut and paste any text to image or image to image, whatever workflow you want, because essentially you're going to send the image like you would send in the load. You just pass it across. So that's if you want to do that. You might just want to put your images in, but, you know, it's sometimes nice to work with like that. So I've included that in the pack. But yeah, um, these look pretty good. Like I said, if I was to take this into photogrammetry, I would expect to get a decent model out of it. Um, it'd probably be better if I could cut the background out for the original, but I do know it doesn't like alpha. So if you try to give it an image with uh, alpha, so RGBA, uh, it complains about that fourth property. So one thing I did do was remove the alpha with a custom node uh you might not have it so my advice is just don't use transparency but alpha channel remove is part of the allure plugin and there it is so we have our turnaround and like i said it's not it does shift quite a bit, but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. It's surprisingly consistent. So yeah, have a little mess around with it. Like I say, I've laid out the uh, sort of workflow here. You can find information on how to take um, video 
and convert to Meshroom. There's loads of tutorials. I followed a couple of them. The same with Blender, you know, how to fix something from Meshroom in Blender. You'll be able to find that stuff super easy. Um, some of the tutorials are quite long, but then Blender's quite complicated and Meshroom's very powerful. So, um, you know, I wouldn't like to understate the complexity, but it's something that you could have a go at. So uh, generate your models, SVD, SVD3U, okay? And uh, get your workflows here. And there it is, as promised. There's the 3D collection workflow. I'm going to thinking about doing these collection packs in the future rather than bringing out a gajillion workflows. We'll put them all into one zip file and then you've got them all in one download because I think it's just much easier doing it that way. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.